Hey guys, it's Ole. It's been a while since I recorded any videos because I've been doing some serious development. I wanted to tackle some of the most important features that I've been wanting to work for years. And today I'm happy to say that I implemented one of the most important ones, which is Monte Carlo simulations. They solve one of the biggest questions in algo trading, which is how to make sure your strategy isn't overfit. So let's get right into it. Normally, when we do research, we use backtests, right? So let's say this backtesting result for one of my strategies. It looks really well, but before I go live with it, the serious question is how do I ensure it's not overfit? How do I ensure the risk that I'm seeing here? For example, the max drawdown right now is minus almost 10%. How do I make sure this is gonna be the result that I'm going to see in the live trading environment? Because in there, it may be less, it might be minus 5%, it may also be minus 20%. And these three are actually very different. And depending on those, I'm gonna to have to adjust the position sizing of my strategy. Because for instance, the win rate in this backtest result is 70%, which is amazing. But what if that wasn't the case? What if it was like 50%? Would my equity curve still look like this? Or would it actually go down? Or what would be the max roto number? So these are some serious questions. And to answer them, before this release, we had no option. But starting today, we're gonna have Monte Carlo simulations for that. But what is Monte Carlo really? Well, to put it simply, Monte Carlo basically means randomization. So what if we weren't actually so lucky in the beginning of the backtest, like what happened in here, and we were actually so unlucky, like what happened in here? How would our equity curve look like then? Or what if the price actually wasn't this? What if there was a little bit of noise in it? So you see how market makers can manipulate the order book? Well, how can we ensure that our strategy is immune to that? Well, one way is to do a little bit of randomization. So for example, what if we don't take the trade when, let's say, the crossover happens now? What if we take it when it happens a few candles later? Now, I know this sounds a bit crazy, but it is actually a great way for estimated stuff. And I emphasize on the word estimation, because when we do Monte Carlo simulations, nothing is going to be accurate anymore, like the actual backtest itself. Everything is going to be in estimations. But anyways, don't let that scare you. It's actually very simple. Now, if you look up Monte Carlo simulations for trading on YouTube, you're going to find a couple of really good explanations of it. And I highly suggest you guys go and watch it. Now, by the way, I am going to make my own explanation video and a deep dive into Monte Carlo in the future but in this video I will just show you the quickest way to run everything so in the meanwhile make sure to give these videos a watch but the point I want to make is this that if you look it up you're gonna see that they are using Monte Carlo in three ways some people like this guy are actually using it to validate their trading signal now if you don't know what a trading signal or an entry signal is don't worry about it because we're not gonna work with it now but the other two types of videos that I found are either shuffling the trades or the actual candles. And if you check out the documentation that I wrote for Monte Carlo, and you can find it under the research module and Monte Carlo page, you can see I started by explaining the difference between trade order shuffling Monte Carlo and candles based Monte Carlo. So make sure to give this page a serious read because I worked really hard on it and it will make things very clear for you. I also included a lot of examples including this one, which will give you a complete script to run just everything. Now, if you want to do this, you need to ensure the script is inside your Jesse project. Now, my project is named but, so the file that you run the script in it needs to be in the root of your Jesse project. Now, assuming that's the case, you only care about one section and that is configuration. We have trading routes, so in this case, it is this for me, and these are the data routes. So whatever you put in your backtesting page on JS's dashboard, make sure to put it inside this file. And then we have the simulation config. The number of scenarios is really important. So I set it to 200. You can set it to 100 or maybe even 50 sometimes works. But the higher it is, the more accurate numbers you're going to get. So even if you can set it to something like 1000, it's going to be better, but of course, it's going to take longer for the simulation to finish. Then we have the starting and ending date of the simulation, the progress bar, the benchmark, and the fast mode. Now, I suggest you turn all of these on, and then we have the strategy config, such as the starting balance, the trading fees, and this is an important part, which is the type of Monte Carlo simulations you want to do for candles. Now, as I mentioned, we have two types of Monte Carlo in Jesse, and this is for the candles type. I'm going to show you what that is in a second, but for now, just so you know, I suggest you guys begin with moving block bootstrapping method, which is this one, and it simply accepts the batch size. I've set it to one week, like this. 
So maybe do the same. But if you want to go with the Gaussian noise option, which is this one, you also need to pass other values such as close sigma and other sigma values. And if you don't know what these are, again, I suggest you just stick with this one because it doesn't need as much configuration. It just works out of the box, but it's going to be different for every case. So if you have the knowledge and the time, I suggest playing around with both of them. And that's it really. Now you just need to go to your terminal and run the command Python and the name of that script file. I have named it testmonticolo.py and I already ran it and here is the results. So let's begin with the first type and that is the Monte Carlo candles and this is the one that I actually care the most. Now with this one what we actually do is that we add some noise to the candles or in the case of the moving block bootstrapping method which I selected here we're not adding noise we're just changing the order which those movements happen in the market. So for example let's say the market actually goes up 1% today and tomorrow it goes down 2% and the next day it goes up 3%. But what if the order of it was different? But if it started by going up 2% and then going down 2% and then going up 1%, how would your strategy behave if this was the case? So you see, I didn't add any noise and I didn't make up price changes. I just changed the order at which those price changes happen in the market. Now, if you're curious why this method actually works and why it's the standard, just look it up. Again, it is called moving block bootstrapping, but that's what I went with. And here's the thing. This is how much my original backtest made. 81%. And this is the max drawdown. It was minus 10%. The sharp was 2.28. Now these numbers are really good, but if you actually ran the Monte Carlo on it and looked at the results here, this is how it would have looked like. So you see this green line here is the original backtest, and these blue lines here are the simulations. Now to put it very simply, the lower the original backtest is among all of these simulations, the better it is for you. It means that you weren't as lucky in the original backtest and that if you go live with the same strategy, then the chances are that you're actually going to get lucky in the real trading. But if, for example, the original backtest was in here, I was being super lucky in my backtest and there is a very low chance that in the live trading, I'm going to get the same amount of luck. But because simulation data isn't as accurate and as good as the actual original data, I don't expect this line to be really low, for example, in here. Maybe it does happen for you at some point and that may be a unicorn strategy, I don't know, but I've never found such a strategy. So how do we read this? We have a table for it. So the sharp ratio of the original backtest was 3.28, but the median, it was 2.33. Now, what is median? It is basically what was happening in the middle of these simulations. So you see the original backtest was better than the median and that's not a great sign. But on the other hand, the best 5%, the sharp was almost five. So these are the best 5%, right? So yes, the strategy was a bit lucky in the backtest, but it wasn't as lucky as the best 5%. Now there's also another way to read this whole thing. And that is to say, forget the original backtest. Let's just read the results from the median. And if that is good enough, I will go live with it. So the sharp ratio in the median is 2.33. And that is above two, which I personally consider really good. So for that single reason, I will go live with this strategy. And I also want to emphasize this. If you see some good results in your Monte Carlo simulations, yes, you can say there's a good chance that your strategy is an overfit and that's great. But if you don't see good results here, it doesn't mean it is definitely overfit. So I also want to emphasize on this, right? The Monte Carlo is not the law. It's not telling you what is definitely happening. It is just giving you some estimations. But at the end of the day, if you just had one single backtest, you didn't have any estimations whatsoever. And having some estimations is definitely better than not having none at all. So from now on, when you do some research to develop a strategy, if you like your backtesting results, and now you're wondering, should I take this live or not? Make sure to run a Monte Carlo simulation on those results. And that is going to tell you some further answers, which is really, really helpful. And yes, definitely this feature will come to the UI dashboard of Jesse, which will make it super easy for literally everybody to use it. But that's going to take some more time. And as I said in the beginning of the video, I've been working on some serious features. I cannot spoil anything just yet, but just so you know, it is worth the wait. 
So make sure to use the script and give me some feedback. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.